Hi everyone, I got the latest boards back from Mosh Park for the Arduino environmental monitor today. Let's build them. Okay, I got the pick and place all set up, and this is going to be the first time that most of my components are going to be 0402 size. There is one set of capacitors which is 0603, but pretty much everything else is all 0402, so this should be interesting. So I got it mounted down, it's coming a little closer, and see what we can do with this. Okay, finally got it all built. It definitely took a lot more to build it than I thought it would. Thankfully, I built the manual pick and place machine because all those 0402 capacitors and resistors, there's no way I could have ever have placed them by hand. I'm sorry, I'm just not a surgeon. So now I got it all built. Got the older version, version 1.01 on the right hand side, and the newer version, 1.02 on the left side. The easiest way to tell the difference is looking at the capacitors for the LCDs, for the charge pump. On the old version, they're 0805 packages. On the left side, they are 0402s. This is what I needed to pick and place for because they are so small. But it definitely takes up a lot less space. And under, underneath the uh, Pro Mini, you can see it's a lot less crowded. This was a major rework when it comes to design for it. You can see how the LiPo connector has moved sides, same with the battery and the uh, on-off switch. I also deleted the green LED on the charge controller on the new version. Didn't really need it, because once it's done charging, the uh, red LED just goes out, and that'll tell you that's fully charged. So that's a few pieces I didn't have to install this time. I also do have its own ultra-low dropout voltage regulator on this board. And since we have our own regulator on the board itself, we now have a modified Pro Mini. Let me push this on here. And you can see I've removed most of the components. If I bring the old one and put it on the board, because we don't need them anymore. And disconnecting them actually helps save more power. So we don't have the onboard regulator that's on the old version. The regulator, it's capacitors that go with it, the protection diode, and the fuse. They're all removed on the new version. So let's power them up. Here's the old version. And here's the new version. Works perfectly. Now the next thing we need to go look at is the amount of power it consumes. Did I make it better or did I make it worse by using my own voltage regulator versus the one that's built onto the Arduino Pro Mini? So here's the current measurements I got using my microcurrent. On the old version, when it was completely off, 
hold 2.1 microamps. And that amount of power was used just for keeping time on the real-time clock chip. Now in the new version, it actually pulls 5.1 microamps, pulls an extra 3 microamps total. Now this would you would think would be a bad thing, but it actually isn't. And the reason being is, in the old version, I was using the Max 17043 uh, LiPo battery fuel gauge. That would always pull more power when it was on and running. But this one always pulls only 3 microamps, whether the unit is on or off. So, considering the unit doesn't stay in an off state very much at all, I have actually have a massive power savings of 30, 40 microamps over the whole course of running the unit. So even though it uses three more microamps when it's off, it's not going to be off much. So it actually helps in the long run, which you'll see in a second. Now, with the unit on and a screen, now mind you, this has nothing to do with micro SD cards. This is just the unit itself. Micro SD card should be irrelevant, especially if you're using the exact same card between two units. So we didn't put that into the equation. With the unit on, and the screen connected, version 1.01 .01 pulled 641 microamps. The new version only pulled 600 microamps, savings of 41 microamps. That's probably the difference right there between using the old Max 17043 and the newer Max 17048. Because again, it's only pulling 3 microamps all the time because I have it in a forced hibernation mode because we're using practically no power. Now, with it on and no screen on, if you're doing long-term data logging, remote data logging, and you didn't need the screen connected, version 1.01 .01 used 60.6 .6 microamps, whereas version 1.02 .02 used 38.4 with a savings of 22.2 .2 microamps. I'm not sure why it's a little bit different here between the two, but regardless, it's a definitely a good savings. So, it's not quite half, but... That definitely significantly improves your time that you're allowed to data log. So if we went from six months, originally we're at like 10, 11 months. Honestly, on a 2,000 milliamp hour battery, this is over one year's worth of runtime now, especially with this number. So for me, it's a pretty finished product. I do have two little things I need to change on the board, such as, I'm not sure if you could see it, but the paint on how they're depanelized. The holes are getting really close to the edge of the board. I'm going to add an extra millimeter around the whole edge of the board itself. Try to give it a little more strength and this way the holes don't get damaged during the panelization. And also on the back, although you're probably not going to be able to see it on here, um, there's two traces that run over to the LCD. They're really close to the hole. I want to back them off a little bit and give it a little bit more space. This way there's no problems once they hit out in the field. Not Oh crap, the screen didn't work, doesn't work anymore because I put a screw through the hole and it ended up abrasing the side of the hole enough to mess with that trace. So, a little more safety involved with uh, the final build. Hopefully, within the next few weeks, I will have that finished. I will have probably 25 of these boards ordered from Oshpark to get me started. I'll start building the build materials and figuring out how much it's going to cost for me for parts. How much time is involved in building it and what I'm going to resale them for price wise on Tindy and hopefully they will be listed on Tindy by about mid April that's my goal so thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments go ahead and leave them down below